Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, Colleen Hoover. So Colleen Hoover may not seem like an obvious choice uh, for a book for me to review on a channel that focuses on uh, crime, pulp and horror fiction. Um, but at its heart, this channel is about popular fiction uh, rather than about those specific genres. Uh, and Colleen Hoover is definitely a great example of a very, very popular writer. So she has absolutely blown up over the last few years. If you walk into any bookstore, you will see dozens of her books out on the shelves. She is phenomenally popular at the moment. And on the basis of this book, which is the first book I've read by her, I can see why. I had a lot of fun with this book. Um, so before I get into talking about the book, let me just talk a little bit about Colleen Hoover and her success. So she's somebody who started out as a self-published author, um, but even as a self-published author, her books you know, got very successful um, and she then got picked up by a big publishing house. Um, and her success is such that in uh, in their list of the most influential people of 2023, um, Time magazine listed her. So, so she made their top 100 most influential people. Um, and I think that is largely down to just the huge success of her books. And whether or not you like her work, I think you need to pay attention to her because she's doing something that readers like. Um, and personally, that always attracts me to, to authors. I find it very interesting to read books that are popular purely because they're popular, even if they're outside of my, you know, my normal, uh, you know, kind of reading diet. I think it's interesting to read books that are making a big splash and that are getting people's attention just to see, you know, what that author is doing right. Um, and Colleen Hoover definitely does a lot of things right in this book. Um, I thought, as I said at the start, I thought it was really, really entertaining read. Um, She's also incredibly prolific. So she's she's published 26 books, I think, it might be more than that, in the last 11 or so years. Um, a few of them are novellas, but most of them are novels. So that's a pretty, you know, that's a pretty good output. Two books plus per year. Um, and she's made you know, millions and millions um, as a result. Um, so let me talk a little bit about Reminders of Him. So I'll talk a bit about the plot and then I'll talk about you know what I liked about it and what I thought it did well. So the plot is, is quite simple. So it's about a young woman called Kenna um, who has been in prison. So she was, uh, she was jailed for the um, involuntary manslaughter of her boyfriend. Um, so they were involved in a car crash. Kenna was driving. She survived, but her boyfriend died. Um, and after being in prison, she learned that she was pregnant. Um, so she has had the baby, um, but the baby has been taken away from her and has been raised by her dead boyfriend's parents. Um, so the book is about her, you know, having been released from prison, trying to rebuild her life and reconnect with her child, um, whilst also dealing with, you know, the, the, the continued grief of the death of, of, of her boyfriend. Um, and it works really well. One of the things the book does really well is just it it gradually reveals that backstory to you um, and you learn more and more about what's what happened um, as the as the plot progresses and more and more you come to realize you know how other other characters have interpreted what's happened and are holding that against Kenna so you really feel like she she has a mountain to climb in terms of in terms of rebuilding her life and and that makes for a, a you know a really interesting and compelling story um, as you probably expect there's a strong romance element to this as well so she meets early on um, in the town a guy called Ledger um, who is a, an ex-American football player who runs a bar um, and who also has some connections um, to her dead boyfriend, having having grown up in the same town as him. Um, and that romance element is really nicely done as well. So the book uses the, the technique, which I sometimes complain about, but actually I thought worked really well here, of having two narrators. So alternate chapters are narrated by Kenner and Ledger. So you get to see both of their perspectives on things and it occurred to me reading it that this is a, a technique that actually works really well for a romance so you know romance books are so often about misunderstandings between the two central characters that's where a lot of the tension in romances comes from um, and so seeing both of their perspectives on things works really well and then on top of that you've got 
all of the, the the baggage around Kenna's past and the fact she's been in prison and things like that and the fact that she you know at times tries to hide that from people so she you know slowly reveals facts about herself to to you as the um, as the reader but also to other characters one of the techniques Colleen Hoover uses for that is that Kenna throughout the book writes letters to her to her dead boyfriend which you know gradually you learn more about their relationship and about you know what happened in the in the crash as a result of that and it works you know it works really well it's a very satisfying and enjoyable read and i enjoyed the romance element of it particularly i thought it was it was really well done you end up really caring about both of these people and and always being frustrated by the misunderstandings between them and you you know you really want them to get together and you've got this nice kind of gradual build up you know they are attracted to each other you know right from the start um, but you've got this fairly gradual build up to them actually getting together um, and and to their first sex scene as well and I thought the sex scene was particularly well done it feels like a, a very natural and realistic and, and believable scene um, I'm not someone who's that bothered by sex scenes in books I quite often kind of skim read them um, but I did think this one was was really well done um, but what I like most about this book um, was the, the and, and I, I'm saying this I don't want people to take this as criticism. What I liked most about the book was how cheesy it is, right? So the writing is really over the top um, and and cheesy and melodramatic. And I love that. I love in popular novels writing that's a bit in your face. So I've talked about Raymond Chandler on the channel recently, whose prose is, you know, very stylized. Um, and Colleen Hoover is certainly no Raymond Chandler, in, in my opinion, anyway. Um, but I did think she had a nice way with words. She just lets herself go. She's not afraid to go you know over the top on things she's not afraid to labor points she does lay things on thick at times um, but I actually thought that worked really really well and it made the book enjoyable to read you know for the writing as well as for the story um, so I can certainly see why she's as popular um, as she is um, I had a really I had a really really good time with this book uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to, to reading more by her um, I've got Verity um, lined up on my Kindle which is one that seems to divide people and I think it's got a bit of a, bit of a twist ending and some people love the twist ending and some people hate it but um, I'm looking forward to, to reading that one soon. So time for a random book from the shelves. Um, I've been neglecting the random book from the shelves a little bit um, this week because I've just been a bit behind with my filming uh, and I've needed to claw back a bit of time but I thought I, I thought I would give you one today. So another um, very popular book um, that has um, a lot of sex in it as well. Uh, so The Carpet Baggers by Harold Robbins. So I haven't got round to reading this one yet but it's a, a very famous book that caused a huge splash um, in the early 60s when it was published in the same way that Colleen Hoover's books have, have caused a splash more recently. Um, so yeah, looking forward to giving this one a try at some point. So I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you wrote Colleen Hoover um, and what you think of her. Let me know your favourite Colleen Hoover book. What should I read next? As I say, I've got Verity lined up, but if there's one you think I should prioritise over that, then do let me know. Um, and as always, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. I hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.